What's up guys? Welcome to our very first vlog. It's a video vlog. I'm Megan Washington. I'm Drew Washington. And we want to talk to you guys about um 2020 goals. Yeah, no, I love showing your face. Resolutions. I got it? Yep. Okay. Goals and I tell you not to be getting those fake eyelashes. You did that one time, now your eyelashes falling out. They're not falling out. I don't think they're not. They're then just. Then why was that eyelash on your face? Well, people lose eyelashes. Oh, okay. So what were you saying? Twenty twenty resolutions, goals, family goals. Yes. Okay. Of course, we have our own resolutions and our own goals, but um, as a family, we wanted to come up with some that we worked on together for the betterment of everybody involved. Okay, so let's get started. Why do you think it's important to have goals? Have goals so you can get things done. You can focus on what you want to accomplish and you can get it done. And most importantly, you need to write your goals down so you can see them, you can feel them, you can caress them <laughs> okay. and get them done. Yeah, well, when you're done making love to your goals, um, <laughs> <laughs> you can accomplish them. And yeah, it is Making important. Making love to your goals. I like that. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of good, actually. Um, but yeah, you don't just go through life aimlessly. You have something to focus on. You have something to, I guess, keep yourself accountable with. So you go back to what you wrote, what you said you were going to do. And you just ask yourself and you have monthly, bi-weekly, whatever, however your goals were, check-ins to see if you're doing it. So as a family, we have come up with some goals in order to get just better organized. Um, we want to leave a better example for our children. I feel like that, well, myself, I didn't really have much organization growing up. Of course we had chores, um, but I want it to kind of be like scheduled. You know, I know people growing up who were like, I brush my teeth every morning and night and I... I don't know. It, it was Russian just. Russian tea? I mean, like, <laughs> to me, I, and they no, floss. But, but you know, there are some kids, like, growing up, they had to, you know, do the dishes, um, clean the dog kennels out, vacuum the floors, and their parents expected that out of them because it was like their schedule. It was something that they had to do. Right. But I didn't, we didn't really have that growing up. It was just like, Y'all been not going to sleep, but these dishes still dirty. Right, and but then like when no the schedule. house got out in out of control and it was a mess, then everyone everybody was in trouble. Come to, yeah, everybody come together and clean it up. Right, but like right. in order for it never to get to that point, then you have to be able to maintain, and that requires schedules and goals and organization. So being organized. So today, you want to talk about the um, chart we made? Oh uh, yeah, you, well you can talk about the chart you made it. We made. Well, we, we came up with like what our chores are right. and then we kind of categorized it into daily, weekly, and monthly. Um, so the chart, chart just lists all of our daily goals and then you just initial next to daily it. Daily chores. Oh, I said goals. My bad, you're right. Chores. And then the weekly chores where we have certain things like meal prepping, taking out the trash, um, cleaning bathrooms. So we just designated days to do each one of these things, laundry, uh, our clothes, and then the boys' clothes. So when you actually write it out and you put it on the board, it looks super manageable because one day, all you're doing is meal prepping. Well, one out of two days out of the week. But then another day, it looks like, oh, we're just doing the bathrooms this day and, and dusting, etc. So as long as you just make sure you stay day by day, and then by the end of the week, you don't have to spend your weekend doing, doing everything. Laundry and cleaning up. Yeah. Trying to get ready for your week. It should already be done. Exactly. And that's that's going to feel nice. You know, like that. Right. And then we started to implement a bedtime, not only for our kids, but, you know, for ourselves. Of course, we can be a little bit more lenient for ourselves. But for our kids, we have a three-month-old named Levi. A three-year-old who will be four this week named Forrest and then our other son Drew just left he went back to New Orleans because school starting again for him after Christmas break who is nine so what we want to do is just get them on a better schedule so what we've implemented is bath every night and bedtime especially it's important for the four-month-old or three-month-old 
because they just sleep better. You know, you get that bath in them, get some food in them, and he'll pass out for three hours as opposed to just like cat napping all night. Same for the three-year-old, I guess, too. Yeah. But yeah, so anyway. But it's going to take some practice. Very much For sure. Yes. Because the three-year-old is similar to his father, a night owl, likes to stay up all night. And he still wakes up pretty early, which is surprising, but he definitely needs a routine to go to bed. He needs his fun, rest. Though. Yeah, he don't want to miss out, for <laughs> sure. Um, so I guess aside from some of the organized goals that we've uh, made for ourselves, we also want to talk about fitness goals. If you don't know us, you know my husband is the owner and operator of Tebow Fitness. That's Team Body Work, so I'm part of the team. You know, you can't do anything alone in life. And as a trainer's wife, people are always asking me, like, what does that mean for you? Like, what does life look like? Is it hard? Does he come down on you? And I'm like... Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Just like, kidding. No, yeah, no, of course. no real pressure, but you know, I'm not just going to let you get out of hand. I'm going to throw some little things in there to make you think about some stuff. Of course. I mean, not yeah. as if I didn't already have the thoughts, but right. yeah, it's you an extra set truly? of accountability. You want yeah. to have another truly? You sure? <laughs> you sure you want that? Stuff like that. I am. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, fitness goals. What? Are yours and then I'll talk about mine. Okay, so uh, I went on the little vegan plan. You know, I had plans on being vegan for life, but it just wasn't working out for me. I was dropping weight like crazy. It was 60 days vegan. I lost 21 pounds and I feel very frail and weak. And that is not my fitness goal. Yeah. My goal is to get bigger, way more, be muscular. And so that's that's the goal is to put on at least 15 pounds this year, 10 to 15 pounds of solid muscle. Like, I don't want the extra, you know, how people do the bulking, the dirty bulking and just put on extra body fat and they get bigger. I don't want to do that. Right. I don't want mine to be straight lean muscle, 10 to 15 pounds. I'll be happy. And to do that, I'm going to have to stick to my meals. Right. meal prep get my workouts in drink my water and get my rest so the bedtime comes back into play yeah but what about your fitness goals um so i'm not as mentally tough as drew ask my dad growing up when i was playing basketball i was like mentally weak sometimes i'd be out there and just be crying so frustrated i <laughs> be crying <laughs> that's crazy um, but I always got it done. I wish I could have seen that. It's like, are you going to boss up or are you going to cry about it? Well, first I'm on a I'm a day duo, but I'm still going to get it done. So my fitness goals are going to start a little bit slower just so I can check in mentally. What I'm going to do is require myself to eat what is exactly on my meal plan for two full weeks without deviating before I implement my physical exercise. No true. Um, no, that's not in my meal plan. I might have a glass of red wine or so just because every other night, not even every other night, maybe twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, but no truly, um, canceling that out, canceling out any other alcohols or liquor, and I'm just going to stick to it for two weeks. Like, you can't two do weeks. it for two you weeks. Up for two weeks. Yeah. You can definitely boss up for two weeks. And that'll just show me that I'm in the right mindset. And that'll to... make you want to go three weeks and four weeks. Right. So I think you, yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll create Momentum. that type of, right. And then every now and then for special occasions, I'll have a truly. <laughs> but not these first two weeks. I just can't. I have goals to hit. You know, I just had a baby and I feel like you have people telling, well, I have people telling me, oh my gosh, you look so great. You just had a baby. And it makes me feel good. But then I also feel like I don't have to buckle down as much. You know, oh, I have room to enjoy myself you know i gave up drinking obviously for 10 months and now it's like give me all the trulies but i can't do that because i do have goals and i don't want to just let things get out of hand so after i do two weeks of committed to my meal plan i'm going to start at the gym 
I'm currently a basketball coach, so life is really hectic between the months of October and February. But after February, I'm going to join a gym just so I can have that solid me time to get stuff done. Until then, I will be working out at my school's gym and just showing myself that I'm able to stick to something. And once I get that progress, it'll be even better. For so what workouts are you going to do when you go to the gym? Are you going to be using any app or? Well, yeah. Um, luckily, my husband's a trainer. Shameless plug. <laughs> so <laughs> I will be using the app and it's not shameless because <laughs> it works. And okay. I don't know what to do on my own when I get there. I've played basketball for years and I've always had a coach telling me, hey, show up to practice. This is what we're doing. And so I've pretty much had a trainer my entire life. Right. And so sense. being able to deviate from that and have to do it on my own it's not like i'm i didn't learn anything those entire you know years playing basketball it's just that's not my forte and i'm i'd much rather Put your legs there. I'm sorry get comfortable i'm sorry i'm sorry my bad guys I, I got this phone for Christmas too. She's trying to break it. <laughs> it's protected. I would just much rather listen to a professional. And that's you. <laughs> so the app does allow him to be in my pocket without him having to be there. Right. Um, but I do also understand the level that I need to work out at because I've worked out with him. So there are some times when you get apps or you get plans or you get programs or challenges and you feel like you're getting it done but maybe you just don't actually understand that level that it takes yeah, to not burning that intensity yeah you've never really experienced it before exactly yeah. and so it's definitely something like if you aren't a person to hold yourself accountable like don't do online classes for college it's the same idea right. but i'll definitely be using the tivo app when i get my workouts in and once i finish like I said, on February, that's when I'll it's reward myself up. with a gym yeah. membership where I have access to more equipment and, I don't know, just being in that environment, I feel like it does something. Yeah. Being around other people who are committed to fitness or some people just, you know, play Candy Crush on the machines. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't believe that. I was at the gym and somebody was playing Candy Crush for a good 10 minutes just sitting on the machine, but that happens at the gym. You see all types of stuff at the gym, but... You have to learn how to block all of that out, stick to your plan, keep the intensity up, get your workout in if you really want to get results. Yeah. And that's what we're going to be doing out here, getting the results. I have to. I just have to because I know yeah. I mean, myself. And you've done it before. Yeah. I mean, that's how we met. She was getting these results. Yeah. And fast. So I know she can do it. We'll get there. Yeah, for sure. And... The last goal that we kind of came up with as a family, which I guess it's a little personal too, is um, just more reading and less social media. Now, I know that sounds ironic seeing as how we're making our first vlog. However, it's not that we won't be on social media. We want to be more of a presence, not only together, but separately. It's just that we want to do less of the mindless scrolling and more of using it for what I think it was initially intended for. Right. It's kind of found its way to just dumb shit, right. honestly. Right. But and getting a lot, of, a lot of people getting caught up in in the just scrolling for no reason, like driving, scrolling on the toilet, scrolling. Yeah, like, like as soon why as you get to are a we stop always light, scrolling like, on the internet? That has to stop. It's sick. Yeah. It's a real. Right. It's a real disease, and we just want to kind of cleanse ourselves from it and. In order to do so, you know, maybe you do feel like you need to buy, use that time doing something. So maybe why not read a book? Um, so Drew posted a status today just asking other people, like, how many books do you want to read in 2020? I don't know if I have an actual number. Um, yeah, I don't have an actual number either because I don't want to set a number and fail. Yeah. You know? Maybe so like wanna, a range. I just want to read as many books as I have time for you know as long as I'm reading in my spare time I feel like I'm doing better than I was because I haven't been reading at all absolutely yeah um 
And then I think just your kids are sponges and they literally do everything that they see you do. And so right now our kid is obsessed with YouTube. And I'm not saying that's just not a generational thing. I feel like that's going to happen regardless. But I would like for him to also be obsessed with reading, you know, and you see us read then you might want to go grab a book. And so just leading by example is something that we want to implement in 2020. And that includes with reading, I think. Yeah. What else? That might wrap up this first vlog, actually. You know? Yeah. Um, so that's just our first vlog, like he was saying. But I do think if there's any topic that you guys would like to hear from us, leave it in the comments. Uh, if there's any questions or comments that you'd like to make about this video in particular, definitely hit us up. and you know, All feedback is welcome. Not negative. Negative feedback is welcome too. <laughs> Negative feedback makes you better also. Okay, well, he'll read those and yeah. I'll just stay to the positive ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really tripping on none of that. Yeah. I get negative comments. I mean, I had freeform locks at one point. It was a lot of negative comments. Used to. Not for me, though. <laughs> She's why I cut my hair, y'all. Anyways, <laughs> we'll talk about that story in another vlog. Yeah, that's not this vlog. Yeah. Huh. Like, okay, anyway. well. It's uh, 10.22 p.m. and uh, I'm about bedtime. to drink my nighttime coffee. Oh my gosh. So, uh... Bye, guys. <laughs>